If a copper John was a stone, it'd be called a copper Joan. This one is called a copper Joan too. Shout out to you, Joan Flagler. You rock. This one is a play on a Copper John, but it's a stone. And we really like Tim Flagler's wife, Joan, so we're just gonna call it the Copper Joan. Anyway, check it out. This is kind of a fun one. If you need like an overachiever stone fly where it's maybe a little bit more work than it needs to be, this is the one for you. All right, so. Size four, Tiemco 200R. We got a four and a half millimeter countersunk bead. This one's a brown metallic, I believe. You can use black or black nickel, whatever you like. Um, but before we slide that forward, we're just gonna add some antenna onto this nymph out of some small span flex. And we're just gonna use a little bit of a pinch wrap. And you can see how that's kicking off on that angle a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna do a few wraps forward fold it over, and then catch it on the other side of that other leg. So if you do that, it'll look like this. All right, and we'll just grab those and trim them about like yay. They should look like little happy snail. Uh, what are those called? Antenna that the snail just grow? Snails are maybe the creepiest animal on the planet, Brig. Do they freak you out? No. They don't? No, you're so I freaking. Don't know what the frick you're talking about, by the way. You're so brave, Rick. Hmm? Thanks. All right. Yeah. So we're gonna add a little tiny bit of super glue, just because I didn't add a very uh, dedicated whip finish there. We just need that to hold those little antenna. We'll take the bead, mash it forward. We're gonna get some O2O lead, and we're gonna wrap it from about here to the bead. Maybe not that far, about like that. Right, and then once we get here, we just wiggle and pull. Same thing on the back, wiggle and pull, and then I can mash that all the way forward. Um, it's gonna butt up to where that thread touches and that will give us a, a good base, a lot of weight for this stonefly. So, I use 210 denier on this because there is a lot of thread buildup that we're going to be doing. Um, also, you do want a flat thread for this. So I chose um, De or, uh, UTC 210 denier. Um, it's really flat, really wide. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rubber leg right here. Well, I guess I should wrap it down first. And I'm, I'm spinning my thread counterclockwise as I do this to keep it nice and flat. As you can see, there's, there's really no rib to that. Now I'll take that back up to where the lead is, give it a little bit more twist, and I'm gonna take a rubber leg and, and tie it in with about that much facing forward. And I'm gonna keep this side all the way on the other side of the hook shank. And if I just pull that tight, I can manipulate that wherever I want it to go. And then once it's there, I just let go of it. Now, this one, I'm just gonna pull and use my thread to place it right next to the other one. Okay, and then just wrap that forward. That's a rubber material, so it'll just flatten out under those thread wraps under tension. But as you can see, now we've got two legs or two tails tied on each side of the hook shank and they just kick out real nice. Okay, now is where we're gonna do a little bit of fly shaping. So we're gonna want to taper this fly from about right here all the way back. Um, this is maybe a more of a salmon fly, so it's gonna have more of a long slender body um, that we're going to work with. So long, slender, and kind of flattish on the sides. And you got to continue to unwind your thread on this one, or else you will cord it up. Not a big deal until you start wrapping the wire for the body, and then you'll realize why the flat thread is so important.
Okay, just look at that underbody. It's nice and smooth, and now we're gonna pick out what wire we're gonna use. So, on this one I've got March Brown 0.5 millimeter wire. This is the biggest that comes from Semperfly, and then I also have brown. And I'm gonna strip off two equal, equal length sections. So I'm just going to take one of these and wrap it on one side. I like to do these one at a time so I can just have perfect control of where the, the wire is actually laying. So as you can see, I wrapped that. It wanted to kind of curl under right there, so I'm going to just make it stay right where I want it, and I'm going to maybe bend that out just a little bit right when I get, get it to where I want it to stay. Okay, I'll unwind my thread, take it back to the top, and I'll do the same thing with the other color wire. And as you can see, I'm just guiding this wire with my hand, making it follow the curve of this hook, and then when I get it locked in where I want it, I'm just going to bend it out. Okay, so we have one going one way, one going the other way, and you really want to make sure you've got tight wraps right here at the end, otherwise it'll want to twist all around on you. So I'm going to take my thread all the way back up now, and before I start wrapping, I'm going to add a tiny bit of super glue right here where those came, those came in because there's going to be a lot of torque on that part of the fly and that thread is going to want to just slip. So if you if you anchor it down with a little bit of super glue, it won't slip as much. Remember, this is the overachiever style. You know, you don't have to do all this crap. You can just dub a body, be done with it. But we're having fun in arts and crafts today. All right, so when I'm ready to start wrapping, I'm going to start with this wire that's furthest from me. I'll turn it this way so you can see it. And I'm going to take that wire and just bend it toward me. Okay? And then, then I'm going to catch my other wire and I'm going to make this one go forward. So once, once I do that, I can catch both of those at the same time. This is the biggest problem area of Copper John's is there's always a gap right there because you're trying to start wire, you know, right at the same, same, same time. So anyway, that's a way to clean that up. It makes a really cool starting point for your wire. And then once you have them both together, you're just going to wrap this up the hook. Now you're going to keep lots of tension on this and you're going to angle those wraps ever so slightly backward so that you're wrapping really, really close to the previous wraps. And it just kind of mashes the wire the only spot where it can go. So you can see we've got a really cool stonefly body going on here. And if your wire starts to get unruly, just kind of give it a wiggle and it will fall back in place. This is why the uh, the the smooth underbody is so critical. And I'm even grabbing my fingers and helping that curvature around there. You don't have to do this much pressure if you use smaller wire, but we got the beefy stuff today. All right. So I think maybe one more turn up. All right. Right about there we can stop because we're going to have some mega wing cases on this. Tie that off. We'll nuke those extra wires. Look at that, I almost cut my thread too. Now, this is a treacherous part of the fly. Those are really, really sharp. No big deal because if your thread broke, it would not unravel anything. But use really loose wraps as you go over the top of that. See, we're all covered up, all good. And now we're ready to start dubbing this. So. You can just use dubbing and nothing more than dubbing for this, but I like to do a mix of dubbing and CDC for this. So 
I'm gonna take some of the Euronymph Thorax Dub from Fulling Mill, and it's, it's a rabbit blend that just has really long fibers. It's really excellent for stuff like this you can pick out. So I'm just gonna dub that straight on, and I'm gonna make a little bump first. And I, you notice that I'm going over the wire, okay? That's about where my, my, my last wing case is going to come out. This is going to have three different wing cases, just like a stone. All right, so for the wing cases, I'm using the Fully Mill Scud Skin in large 8 millimeter black. And I'm just going to take a section of this and I'm gonna cut a notch in it. All right, so we've got a notch cut just like that, and we're just gonna lay that right on top of this. And we'll give it a, a quick tie down. And trim that out. All right, so the next thing that goes in here are some legs. So. Same material we, we use for the, the tails and the antenna. These are going to be for our legs. And I'm just going to tie one in on each side of this wing case. First one's there. I'm just going to swing this around, catch it on the other side. And if, you're, if your leg isn't, you know, it doesn't have the amount of kick out that you want, where your thread is, right? See how that my thread's touching this? If I give it a lot of tension now, it will, it will only put tension on this leg that I have. So I'm going to get it about where I want. Once the tension's there and the angle is where I want, I just do a few more wraps and it locks it in. Um, and on this, this middle wing case, we're going to do a loop of CDC for this one. So CDC on a nymph moves really, really well, um, but we're going to mix it with a little bit of dubbing. So I'm going to take some of my same dubbing. I'm just going to dub that on there. You want this to be pretty thick and buggy because we are going to pick it out. There's a little hack at the very end I'm going to show you to keep this a nice flat stonefly profile. So as you can see, I've, I've got a a wad of that built up and now I'm going to take some CDC. So this is just natural CDC and I've got two feathers together and I'm going to use the hairline feather prepper. So I'm just going to put this on the table and take these feathers and I'll, I'll show you what this looks like. So I've just taken those feathers and I put those in the feather prepper just like that. See that? So at this point I can take my scissors and cut off the butt ends. Okay, and I'm ready for my expensive chip clip that just happens to have our logo on it. Oh, weird. I'll just clip that out of there, just like this, pull it up. Now I've got that in my clamp. We'll yeet those stems out of there with our scissors. And now we're ready for a dubbing loop. Okay, so let's just do it. I'm probably gonna wrap back over this dubbing a little tiny bit. It all just kind of blends together. Um, same technique as before, you're going to close off that loop. We have a full video on how to achieve like a real quick dubbing loop with these tools as well. Um, if you just search the, the Swiss, uh, Swiss clamp on our YouTube channel. Alright, so I've twisted that all up. I'm going to take a little bit of you know, a, a comb brush it out a little bit, and we're just going to add a lot of bugginess to this fly by adding this all just right here in one clump. Okay, so tie that off. We'll make some more sense of this fly. I know it looks, it looks like it took a turn for the worse. And I'm just going to wrap my thread back to about right there. Okay, so at this point, we're ready for another wing case. All right, so I'm just gonna lay this next wing case down, tie it in. Again, this is an overachiever. 
You don't have to do all this stuff. All right, so there we have our wing case. If you need to adjust it around and, and move, that's fine. Uh, just set it however you want. And clean that up a little bit and another set of legs. Time in the same way. Right, we did the same thing to create that angle. And now let's finish the final step. We're just gonna build the rest of it with dubbing. All right, and we're gonna get this one nice and big and bushy. We're gonna comb this one out a bit. All right, so we've just got a big old mess going on right here in the front, and that's that's how we want it. And then we're just gonna do one more wing case. All right, so our final wing case just goes on, lined up with the others. And this one just terminates right behind the bead. Just like that. And we will Pull it a little bit tight this time when I trim it because I'm going to try to get as much of that stuff off as I can behind the bead. Just like that. And then we're just ready for our third set of legs on each side. As you can see, I mean, there are easier ways to tie in legs, but when we do it this way, we really do have two legs going back and we're gonna have this set of legs going forward. So I'm gonna tie it in just very shortly going back like that. Tie it in with a pretty snug wrap. Loop it around and do it on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna take this guy and cut him off on both sides and then we will look at the length I like these front legs to be a little bit shorter just like that and to finish it off we're just gonna put a tiny bit more dubbing stay tuned though I'm going to show you the way to keep it flat on the bottom all right so we're good there I'm gonna throw a whip finish in there, just a hand whip, because I am gonna add a little bit of super glue to this to keep it nice and put together. Trim that off, and I'll add a little bit of super glue here. Now, what I'm gonna to do to keep this just a big gnarly flat profile is I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna come in here and pick out all this dubbing I put on there and the CDC. You're gonna push it all along the sides just like the legs. So this is gonna kind of look like breathers or just other buggy parts that move. But as you can see on the bottom, you know, we have really good thread down there. You can't really see through it. But to keep this, to keep this so that it doesn't you know, just go back to, to the round form. I want to take a little bit of resin and I'm just going to make a little bead down the middle of this. Okay, and I'm just going to tease that resin to, to each side. Add a little more if you need. Just like that, and then we will just come in here and tag it with our UV light. So, now when you see this and I rotate that, that's like the buggiest stonefly you've ever seen. So, anyway, this is a super fun one. We, we focused on the art side of it. Shout out to Tim and Joan Flagler. You didn't even know that we are going to name this fly the Copper Joan, but guess what? Here it is. <laughs>